Grab your social regressive yakety snacks, everybody, because today's epic cartridge deserves an epic video, and you know that I'm the kind of guy to give it to you. Uh, down below, you're going to see in the timeline that we actually have chapters. So if you want to skip around the different sections to see how this performs, then uh, go ahead and check that out, because we're going to have graphs and charts. We are going to have gel tests. And then, of course, we have hunt footage from the November hunt that I did. Some of you guys guessed correctly that the cartridge that I was using on that Winchester hunt in Missouri, uh, that it was 6.8 Western. You'd gone out to Sammy and uh, checked out some of the new listings out there. Yeah, it was 6.8 Western. So this is the cartridge we're gonna be taking a look at today. And you might be wondering why there's one more hunting cartridge out there. And there are some very good reasons that are all right here. Come take a close look. This is our area of opportunity. This is a gift that was just given to me uh, for Christmas by my father-in-law. This is the Spear Bullet Catalog from 1975, I think. And as you can see, a lot of these share some very similar properties. Uh, even the bullets that you see are right up here for the, uh, the centerfire rifles. Some of the more modern ones, bottleneck cartridges all. Uh, these are flat base, for one thing. And they're all going to have kind of a, a spire point, or maybe it's a full metal jacket or hollow point. And we've started to add some technology since uh, the days of 1975. And that's when, you know, a lot of the cartridges that we've been using were developed either then or way before then. Heck, 270 Winchester is about 100 years old now. I think we just have a couple years before that. But things have moved along in the meantime. Now, I'm not going to say that these bullets were no good. Actually, a bunch of these are still being made by Spear. Some of the things that you see on here, you can still buy on their catalog. Perfectly effective. Your daddy and your granddaddy used these to hunt deer. But then things did move along a little bit because there are some advances in technology that we can get into to make these a bit more effective. So, for example, this is a modern Spear bullet. This is one of the uh, boat tail soft points. I've been using these in 243 for a while. They're very accurate and they have a pretty high ballistic coefficient, higher than the ones that you see behind me here. A lot of that comes down to that boat tail right there. You can see that the point doesn't really differ very much from those bullets in the background, but the boat tail sure does. And that starts to make this a more streamlined, efficient bullet through the air and it can carry its energy a lot farther and it's just really not gonna slow down. So you're gonna get better trajectory and better impact on the target. Nowadays, every company is making something like this. This is the Hornady ELDM. So this has a very, very high ballistic coefficient. This one is a 140 grain, 6.5 millimeter uh, bullet right here. And this has a ballistic coefficient over 0 0.6, if I remember correctly. So these are very, very efficient through the air. And yeah, they, they're gonna keep energy. They're gonna have a good trajectory and they're just gonna be a bit better overall. It's not that they're gonna be more precise or anything. Uh, some of these old ones, like the old hollow points, are gonna be wonderfully precise, but uh, this will get out to some of those farther targets and make those shots a lot easier. And that's why we have a glut of new cartridges nowadays. That's why we have things like the six millimeter arc, previously reviewed. Uh, make sure you check out the whole series that I did on six millimeter arc. Uh, we have 224 Valkyrie, all kinds of other fun new cartridges that people are wondering, you know, is this just some kind of me too? Is someone just trying to grab a little bit of market with some silly hype? No. What is happening is everybody is basing these cartridges around this new technology, these new bullets. A lot of these just plain will not work in the old cartridges that you have. And if it can, a lot of time what you have to do is modify your barrel. So you have to get a different twist rate. Uh, you have to maybe cut a different chamber with a different throat in order to get these to fit. Uh, sometimes you get these really pushing back into the case and uh, just you know kind of filling up some of that space that you might have in there. And what you really wanna do is have a, a case that is specifically built around a bullet like this. And that's how we get into 6.8 Western. One other area of development to consider is the case. This is 300 Win Mag right here, and nobody has a problem with 300 Win Mag. This is a great cartridge, uh, very functional, very, uh, very good performance. This has been used by snipers in the military. This has been used by hunters worldwide. You can take any game in North America with this and a fair amount of stuff down in Africa. Uh, it is a great, great cartridge, and it has been used by a lot of people for a long time. But what if you could take a lot of the function of this? Okay, so you have this, which is a long action cartridge. It's quite long. Uh, 
You have 30 out six, which is long, 270 win. Those are, you know, some of your great old cartridges that are used by a lot of people. But what if you could take a lot of that performance and stuff it into a shorter case and use it in a short action rifle instead of a long action? That way you can have a receiver that is theoretically stiffer. The whole thing is going to be lighter. Magazines are probably going to be cheaper. The rifle is going to be smaller overall, just kind of a lower profile. And uh, you can actually more easily mount optics on that because that, uh, that, that receiver is just so much shorter. So what if you could take this and replace it with something like this? Here's a comparison. There is 300 Win Mag, and there is, well, this is about the same size as the 300 Winchester Short Mag. You can see that the heads are the same diameter. So we have a very similar case, but what we've done is we've been able to increase kind of the barrel size of this by getting rid of that belt. And we've shortened everything up, and this is actually, uh, the 300 uh, WSM is almost the same performance as 300 Win Mag. Now, it kind of depends on what bullet you're using, but if you are going bullet for bullet, like a 190 grain bullet we're going to discuss here in a second, you can actually get pretty much the same performance out of the two. And you get that smaller, lighter, easier to deal with rifle. Pretty cool. So then we got into seven millimeter, you know, people wanted a more efficient bullet. So you kind of step things down to the seven millimeter. You have the 270, which is again, a wonderfully streamlined bullet, but like 270 Winchester, the original uh, cartridge that we have from way, way, way back in the early 20th century, we can go further if we can add a bigger bullet. So this is a 6.8 Western case. Let me show you a full one here. Here's a whole 6.8 Western cartridge. You can see that we have that very low drag bullet with an extremely long ogive. And then we have that plastic pointed tip up there. Uh, everybody nowadays is wanting to use those tips. It helps to reduce drag and it also helps to initiate expansion. So if you have a bullet like this one that is bonded, this is the 165 grain AccuBond LR. Uh, you might see these uh, shortened up as the Abler ABLR. Um, it's a bullet that is becoming well known for its ability to take games. So you have good terminal performance and you have excellent exterior ballistics as well. So this is going to have a lot of authority when it hits. But this is it right here. What they did is they took that 270 WSM, pushed the shoulder back so that they could uh, get the case kind of cleared of a lot of the bullet instead of having a lot of bullets sticking in there. Get a little bit of a longer neck. That's nice. Then you crank up the twist rate to one in eight or one in 7.5, and you give it a little bit longer lead inside that barrel and you have 6.8 Western. And this is a tremendously effective cartridge. In my own hunt, which I'm gonna show you some of the footage here, uh, this is what we used out in Missouri. Winchester invited a handful of us out to Pike County for a whitetail hunt, and I was able to use 6.8 Western to take a good sized doe and a really gorgeous buck. And I have the meat sitting in the freezer right now. If you wanna see those full videos, I'll put links to them right here. It was a blast, and the cartridge was wonderfully effective. The two initial offerings from Winchester are the 165 grain AccuBond long range that I was talking about. And then we have the 170 grain. Uh, this is a uh, their silver tip right here. And I was able to test both of these in jail. We'll check those out here in a second. But this is the one that me and a couple others used on the hunt. And of all the animals that we took at distances anywhere from, I think the closest shot was mine at 60 yards. There might've been one that was a little bit closer. And then uh, we had the longest shot was 175 yards. That was Jimmy. And with this 165 grain bonded bullet, uh, we got through and through on all but one animal. So this provides a very heavy hit, even on some of these bigger bucks and does that we were after. And, you know, even striking a shoulder did not matter. It just cut straight through the animal out the other side Thank and you. left a massive trail on the other end. Uh, just a huge uh, blood trail for us to follow when the animals did make it a few yards. And most of them did not make it far at all. I think that uh, uh, Brittany's only made it one step. There were a couple others that they just pretty much crashed right there. I had one of mine go about, I don't know, a couple yards, and then the buck went about 75. This is the 165 grain AccuBond, and this is the 170 grain ballistic silver tip. 
The silver tip looks really cool. Now, despite this one's heavier weight, this one actually has a lower ballistic coefficient. So overall, I'm gonna recommend this one. It moves out faster, has a higher BC, it has that bonded construction, and I'm sure that this one is gonna be just fine for a lot of stuff, but if you can find the AccuBond, do buy this one. I highly recommend it. Uh, this one just grouped well, and I can vouch for it having actually tested it. All of us actually used this on that hunt, all of us that shot 6.8 Western. Now, as you can see, both of these are short action, so they're gonna fit in short action magazines, short action rifles. You're gonna get that quick, short bolt throw rather than the long action, and you are not gonna be missing much of anything in terms of performance. In fact, even though this, you can look at this as a 270 WSM, one that they just you know, tweaked a tiny little bit and they're, uh, you might think, oh, they're trying to make a cash grab off it. No, 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 that's not it. As we discussed, you have, a, you have to have a different twist rate and with that shoulder pushed back, this is a different cartridge overall. But what this does is it actually leaves the muzzle slower than the, uh, the 270 WSM, but it doesn't want to stop. That's the big deal about this. Even with some of the more efficient bullets that we have in 270 WSM, they cannot keep up with this as the distances increase, as we're gonna see in the charts here. One way to frame this whole discussion of trajectory, a lot of the time it doesn't really matter. If you're gonna be taking your shot at 100 yards, it doesn't really matter if one cartridge is gonna drop one inch over another. That's not really gonna change anything when you're talking about the boiler room of the animal that you're shooting at. Uh, that might make a difference on a prairie dog, but uh, for most of the stuff that we're gonna be talking about here, which is big game, doesn't make any difference at all. Where this really comes into play though is when you don't know exactly where your target is. You're not exactly sure about distance. You wanna be able to easily get on target and you want to be able to you know, make a decent hit no matter if you're off a few yards on your distance or if things are stretching out just a little bit, it's just gonna be a little bit easier to get on target. Starting at the bottom, we have 308 Winchester. For this one, I chose, these are all Winchester loads if I can help it. I wanted to get an apples to apples comparison using very similar bullets and just kind of a similar setup overall. Uh, in this case, I had a 168 grain uh, Nosler bullet in that one. And you can see that it has quite a lot of drop at 600 yards versus the others. 6.5 Creedmoor jumps up quite a bit, so it's gonna be a bit easier to get on target. And then stepping up a bit, we have a huge cluster of rounds that are all gonna be hitting within an inch or two of each other. These are all very, very close as far as the vertical goes. So we have 300 WSM. We have 6.8 Western with that 170 grain bullet. 300 Win Mag and 270 Winchester. So those two at this distance are actually hanging pretty tight. They're actually really overlapping this. Seven millimeter Remington Magnum steps things up a little bit. And then you have 6.5 PRC and 6.8 Western 165. I told you that 165 has a higher ballistic coefficient and it's actually leading the pack, you know, this little uh, group right here. We have 6.5 PRC and then slightly above it, we have that 6.8 Western. Then we have a seven millimeter WSM, which is uh, pretty interesting to me. I wasn't expecting that. And then the fastest one overall is 270 WSM. Uh, 270 is going to be a real contender for this whole thing using that lightweight bullet within some of these uh, more practical ranges. We're gonna talk about why maybe that's still not the best choice, even if it has the best trajectory. Uh, we'll take a look at that here in a second, but you can see how the trajectory works within these kind of functional distances. This next chart shows extreme distances. So we are looking at 1,800 yards, which is a ridiculous distance. This is one that uh, nobody's really gonna be hunting in, but I wanted you target guys to see uh, what this cartridge could be able to do for you. Um, and really we're gonna concentrate on 6.8 Western, that 165 grain bullet, and 6.5 PRC. The 6.5 PRC, there is no load on the Winchester catalog, so from this one I had to grab a, a Hornady load. Uh, this is using their 143 grain ELDX. So again, we're comparing hunting to hunting. If we wanted to go ahead and do some target bullets in the future, I think they'd, again, kind of stay pretty similar to each other. But you can see that these two lines pretty much overlap each other from the get-go all the way out to this extreme distance of 1800 yards the two of them are pretty much overlapping but when you kind of take into account the fact that you have another 22 grains of bullet with that 6.8 western you are dealing with 
a, a good hit more energy. This is going to provide a pretty good wallop out at any of the distances that we're talking about. Even though it and the 6.5 PRC are hanging together, this one is going to hit harder. That's just drop. Having spent a lot of time doing a lot of long range shooting, I am much more interested in wind drift. You can deal with drop quite a bit. Yes, it helps you to get on target a lot easier, especially if you are at kind of unknown distances. But wind drift, this is the thing that you are really fighting when you're out there in real world conditions. Assuming a 10 mile an hour direct crosswind at 200 yards, Let's see what kind of wind drift we're dealing with. I've sorted these in order of uh, the best de uh, wind dealing. So this is the 270 WSM, and this one's gonna show up at the top of, of a lot of these charts. If you are looking for something that's an alternative maybe to 6.8 Western, I think a lot of you guys might look at this one. This one is pretty darn sweet. Uh, using a 150 grain bullet, that's kind of where 270 WSM tops out. Uh, we have wind drift of only about two inches at 200 yards. That's great in a 10 mile an hour wind. You can see that things bump up just a tiny bit for 6.5 PRC and 6.8 Western uh, with that 165 grain bullet. And then again, we just kind of very, very small steps until we get out to 308 Winchester. And you can see that that's a pretty big jump. Uh, for the amount of windage that it has to deal with at 200 yards. At 600 yards, we're keeping our top three positions and that's how it hangs out for the rest of the time. You can see here that our top three maintain that same setup. So we have 200 or 270 WSM at a thousand yards, has about 60 inches, but you can see that they're all just barely uh, within touching distance of each other. These are all extremely close. This is something that I wouldn't even consider really a factor. This is going to be a very small amount in my scope that I have to dial if I were to make a difference between all of them. In fact, that would probably be the exact same uh, dial setup on the scope. If you want to see how this compares to some of your other favorite cartridges, look at that, that's almost 100 inches of drift at 1,000 yards with 308 Winchester. And this is a cartridge that people use in F-Class matches and all kinds of other tactical matches. You know, 308 Winchester is a great cartridge, but you can see what some of these magnums start to do instead. You target guys are gonna be really interested in this. Where do these bullets go subsonic from these cartridges? We're looking at 270 WSM, it going subsonic, and this is uh, not at my own elevation. I'm a little bit higher than this, but at, at sea level, assuming 50% humidity, uh, it's this one is a 270 WSM is going to go subsonic at, at 1550 yards and then just slightly scaling back for 6.8 Western and 6.5 PRC and the reason why I put 6.5 or 6.8 Western above this is that it actually has just a little bit longer subsonic range it's just a, a couple extra yards if I remember correctly but you can see that it's really far out there. Uh, seven millimeter Remington Magnum comes in next and then we really start creeping down. That 170 that I told you had the slightly lower ballistic coefficient, uh, you can see that this one does start to scale things back. Then we get into, it's actually equal with 6.5 Creedmoor at this point, and then uh, trailing by a long way we have 308 Winchester before 1200 yards. Now for information that's more interesting to you hunters. Yes, a lot of these are gonna have a wonderful trajectory, but how much energy are they actually bringing on the target? This might be a big deal for you if you are dealing with dangerous game, dealing with some of your larger ones like moose. Uh, at zero, this is at the muzzle, the most energy you're gonna get is 300 Winchester Magnum. Then we have 300 WSM, seven millimeter WSM, 270 WSM, and then uh, we have the 6.8 Western with the 170 and the 165. But keep an eye on this because these are going to start to change places. That energy is going to shift as trajectory shifts, as things start to slow down, as those ballistic coefficients start uh, slowing some of these down more than others. At 100 yards, which is going to be a pretty common deer shot, you have 300 Winchester Magnum still hanging out, and really the only change that's happened is that 6.5 PRC has moved up above 270 Winchester that we had right there. So immediately, at practical distance, this one is swapped out just with one uh, foot-pound of energy. 300 Wind Mag is still hanging out at 200 yards, but things are definitely mobile. Uh, you can see that this 170 grain 6.8 Western is now in third position, and the other 6.8 Western is starting to, uh, pretty soon it's gonna be shifting its way up as well. 270 WSM has uh, fallen just a little bit, but it has kind of swapped out with two or with seven millimeter WSM. 
At 600 yards, we made a big 400 yard jump here, and you can see that 6.8 Western, that 165 grain bullet, has surged ahead with 1,667 foot pounds of energy. Uh, the 170 has fallen a bit. It's going to kind of hang out at the middle of the pack for the rest of this. And now we're going to see at what distance we have hit the 1,000 foot-pound mark, where things are really starting to drop. So what we have down here with 308 Winchester, that happened back at 625 yards, 700 yards for 6.5 Creedmoor. And then as we start creeping up, 6.8 Western, that 165 grain bullet, has taken control. It owns the field. Uh, beyond 1,000 yards, 6.8 Western is the clear winner among all of these. Its ballistic efficiency keeps that energy going and right there as it drops below that 1,000 foot-pounds it's going to have the greatest energy beyond that point. All that muzzle energy has its drawbacks so here's our recoil chart. As you might expect the 300 Winchester Magnum with that 190 grain bullet is winning the day uh, followed closely by 300 WSM but then we have the two 6.8 Westerns. Yes, these do kick pretty good, uh, as you might have seen on my face uh, when I uh, took the shot with that uh, Tacticam attachment on there. I, I lost about one and a half inches of eye relief putting the scope camera on my scope, and uh, it was fine as long as I remembered to brace up behind it, but uh, I forgot on that last shot with the buck, and so I punched myself in the face pretty good. But yeah, you can see that at least we have dropped a fair amount with the uh, the recoil here. Uh, we have dropped about four, over four foot-pounds of energy for these two, but then they start to drop off. You can see it's not much different from a seven millimeter Remington Magnum, seven millimeter short Magnum. Things drop off considerably by the time you get to 6.5 Creedmoor. But again, you know, we're looking at Magnums here, and okay, yeah, it's gonna kick pretty good. Not as bad as 300 Win Mag. Before I show you the ballistics gel tests with these two loads at 200 yards, I wanted to describe some of the effects that you're gonna get from a long bullet like this one, like the ELDX, like the Abler, uh, like the ballistic silver tip. This isn't just a parlor trick where you're going to get a flatter trajectory at long distance and you know maybe have a little bit of an easier time getting on target. No, this is going to provide extra energy on that target as we just talked about because it is much more efficient. And when it hits, when it peels back, it's going to leave a tall column of lead behind it. It's going to have greater momentum and you're gonna have a better chance of this exiting the animal and leaving a good blood trail for you. Uh, some of these are designed to open up and really kind of dump all the energy inside game, which can work, like the 350 Legend uh, Deer Season XP that people have been talking about. They say that it works very, very well. I've heard some very good results from most people. We'll talk about that in another video. Uh, but this is a little bit different in that it's going to kind of hold together really well, like this uh, AccuBond long range this is going to hold together great and in the case of our animals it drove all the way through so we could have a good blood trail in case we didn't drop them right away first up 165 grain AccuBond. Uh, this one has been going through and through all the deer that we've been testing out here except for one we had one where it did stop on the uh, the far hide but for most of these shots even at 175 yards that jimmy got uh, that was just straight through that buck um, yeah, these things are hitting really hard. So remember, this is a Magnum. Yes, it's a short action, but uh, we're gonna see exactly what this does. The gel we're using today is 20% uh, clear ballistics gelatin, so this is not uh, the 10% that I usually use where things cruise through a lot easier. This one's not gonna go quite as far, and it's probably gonna get you a better example of what a deer uh, would actually be like. They have just, everything about them is a little heavier than the, uh, the, the pork that I'm used to. Let's take a shot. <laughs> We're at 200 yards. Thank you. 
check it out dudes and hey this is Jimmy with Winchester hey everybody so he's partly responsible for the mess that we have right here today so uh, what, what was kind of the thinking when you put this together uh, so the goal of 6-8 Western was long-range uh, hunting and long-range shooting applications uh, the bullets are all built for big game hunting uh, we also have offerings for you know long-range uh, target shooting as well uh, but they're all designed to work excellent on big game animals and that's what you see you know right here is this very large uh, permanent wound channel uh, the bullet penetrated you know all the way through the first 16 inches now this is 20% ballistic gel so it's a lot denser than you know the typical 10% and it looks like we picked up another uh, inch here uh, into this this backer block. It's one heck of a bullet. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I'm I'm floored by this. Like, I'd be happy if this were a 10% block, and you know it came out like this. Penetration to be a little low if it were 10%, but still, look at that. Look how wide. Can you grab that tape measure? Yeah. Let's see how wide this sucker is, because that is gigantic, and that explains why these Probably animals are dropping fast. Three inches or more, maybe. Whew. All right, you want to talk about an energy dump? Check out all the energy that went through the board, broke the sawhorse right up here, just cracked it right in half. Oh, it broke it right here, that's all broken. And then this leg is, I don't know if it's gonna survive this second hit. <laughs> Let's see. We'll see. <laughs> Might have to improvise, go get some two by fours and make a new sawhorse, we'll see. Yeah, okay, now we have another hunter here that's been with us. This is uh, Brittany Jill. Hello. And she uh, she took, what, a buck and a doe, right? Just a buck. Oh, just a buck, okay. Yep. But your buck was gorgeous. Those... Biggest deer, my biggest buck to date. Yeah, what, what was the uh, the measurement on the antlers? 151. <laughs> yeah, it was a monster, and it, I liked the shape of it. It was... He was a beautiful deer. Yeah, so what do you think of the, uh, the round overall? shot him and he dropped yeah he took probably one step and went down so I'd say it worked next up 170 grain ballistic silver tip look at how cool that is got that kind of blackened bullet yeah and uh, I expect that this is gonna hit pretty hard uh, now like what Jimmy was saying this one's probably gonna open up a little uh, more quickly so probably for some of your uh, lighter game Let's see what this does. 170 grains, has a good uh, boat tail on it again. And uh, this one is coming in about three quarters of an MOA higher than the other, but horizontally is just right. So it's probably just down to the ballistic coefficient. Maybe a, a little bit of uh, harmonic vibration, but let's see what it does to gel. Six eight Western hits hard. <laughs> there are chunks of sawhorse everywhere, and we didn't even hit it. Look at that. It's just a solid hit on the uh, the gel here. Now I did have one bad shot up at the top. We can kind of compare the two. They look very similar, but here is the uh, the good hit. And look, the energy was so harsh that it's tearing the plywood apart. It's delaminating it. And that's the sawhorse. That's all that's left. I can't believe it's actually standing. I thought this was gonna pitch onto the ground. Hot dang, that hits hard. All right, tell us what we got here, Jimmy. All right, well, we, as discussed, we have a very damaged uh, sawhorse, so I guess we have to replace that. But that's okay, because we got a really great looking hit here. Uh, full penetration through that, that 16 inches of 20% gel. You know, and, and you know, we noticed this picking out the bullet from the, the, uh, the last shot. This gel is, uh, it goes cold out here. Like 34, maybe you know, high 30s, maybe. Yeah, it's chilly. It's a little denser than normal, um, so you're gonna probably see more penetration than this, you know, in an actual situation. Which, uh, you know, the 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 performance looks great. Um, it it upset quickly. Actually, it looks very similar to the Acubon long range, 
but the AccuBond long range did uh, did produce a, a larger cavity, but this is just ideal for for deer, uh, great for bear as well, and we got uh, about three inches more penetration here, three and a half, so yeah. yeah, all in all about 20 inches of penetration through that 20% gel. Yeah, that's beautiful, and still nose forward, big mushroom. Yep. Yeah, this is a little bit of a different channel, like he's saying. Look at that. It, it looks like it maxes out at about two inches wide. Why don't you see what we actually have? Yeah, measuring from the top, it's about, yeah, two. And uh, there's about two there as well. Yeah, so not quite as wide as the other, but check out how long that devastation lasts. You know, both of them were good, nasty channels, uh, but the, uh, the other one just kind of bloomed and then kind of slowly tapered off. This one it seems to just kind of maintain. It's tearing things up all the way back till it really starts to settle down just before it leaves block number one. Yeah, both of these are, are gonna be great for tearing stuff up. The first rifles chambered for 6.8 Western are of course going to be from the Olin Corporation, so you're going to have Winchester and Browning there. And on the Winchester side, the one that I actually tested out in the field, that was the XPR. That is an inexpensive hunting rifle that you guys have asked me about before in the past. I'm not going to talk about it right now. I really enjoyed my time with it, but we're going to do that in another video. Uh, I don't have a rifle to actually show you guys, but I can talk you through how it was out in the field, and I did get some footage out there. A uh, really cool little rifle. But then we have the Model 70 if you want to take the price tag and some of the kind of upgraded parts up a little bit. And then on the Browning side, you have the X-Bolt. And I think we need to keep an eye in the future. Winchester didn't say yay or nay to either of these, but I think it'd be really cool. You have the Browning BLR, which is the lever action rifle. And you have the Browning BAR, which is their semi-auto. Both of those are currently chambered in 270 WSM as one of their offerings. So I think it's only natural that they're going to end up uh, putting 6.8 Western in there as well. And I think both of those would be really, really cool choices. It's so nice to have uh, a semi-auto and a lever action rifle in magnum chamberings. And, you know, I've seen people using the BAR, for example, out hog hunting to great effect because you can have some heavier hitting rounds, flatter trajectories, and you can get out there on some of these long fields and just wipe them out. I've seen some really cool footage out there, so hopefully we'll see that in the future. Now it's time for the most important part of our discussion, and I think this is why a lot of you guys subscribe to The Social Regressive in the first place. I'm not a hype man, I'm not here to talk about how awesome something is and how it's gonna fix every problem that you have. Everything has its own purpose, it has its own place, and it, this might have a place in your closet or in your safe, and it might not. So we're gonna talk about that here. If you wanna to subscribe to The Social Regressive for more of these honest talks, please hit that subscription bell down or subscription button down below and hit the notification bell too so you can be notified uh, when new videos come out. It's your best shot to find out. YouTube doesn't like us, so we have to do what we can to try to get the message out there. But here is what I think is the purpose of this cartridge and what sort of folks might be interested. Now, naturally in the name, 6.8 Western. They are gearing this for hunting. You can see all the pictures on here are of white tails and elk and all that sort of stuff. And I think that is its primary purpose. This is going to be a wonderful uh, cartridge that fills uh, sort of the same roles as you get from uh, any of those Magnum cartridges that we talked about here. like. Uh, this really is a lot like a 7mm Remington Magnum. We, we would love that cartridge, 7mm mag, because it, it's so flat shooting. It has a little bit less recoil in general than a 300 Win mag. And it's just very flexible for all kinds of distances and it's going to provide a whole lot of energy. When you have bullets as good as these, terminally and through the air, that means that you're going to be able to increase your distances where you can strike an animal and not only will you have a great trajectory to make it easy to make that shot, but you're going to uh, provide a lot more energy on target than you're going to get with some of these others. I think that's really where the sweet spot of this is. If you are especially a western hunter, there are folks out east that you know love to poo-poo the idea of uh, long-range hunting, 
but long range hunting definitely has its place and that place is out west. A lot of people don't know this about Oklahoma, but Oklahoma is really split. People think of it as prairie or as maybe desert. If you haven't been out here, you might think of it as just, you know, kind of scrub grassland. But no, it's a split state. On the eastern side, we have a lot of trees, a lot of forests, a lot of hills. It's thickly wooded, and that's the sort of place where, yeah, you're going to get your kind of traditional hunting shot of 75 yards out to maybe 200. And as you start moving further and further west, the fields start getting more and more open, you start getting into rolling hills, and you start losing cover. And that's just the reality of what it is hunting out west. In the prairie or in the mountains, a lot of the time you have a longer shot and there's nothing to do about it. It has nothing to do with your stalking skills. Uh, there's just nothing really to, uh, to mask you, to hide you, and to get you a little bit closer to your game. So you just have to take that longer shot. And this is one that, like I say, is not only going to get you that flatter trajectory to get on target and make sure that you get that correct vital hit, but it's also going to get you more energy than you're going to get out of some of these others, especially as those distances increase. What that all adds up to is actually a very flexible cartridge that you'll be able to use either out east or out west, and you'll be able to take anything from coyotes because of its nice flat trajectory. Uh, you'll be able to you know, take some of your predator animals all the way up through moose and bear. It's gonna have enough energy and the bullet is gonna be constructed right to handle it. Uh, this is going to be useful in a whole lot of situations. So maybe you don't have to have three different rifles, uh, you know, sitting in your, your closet waiting for, you know, their particular time. You could actually use this for a variety of situations. And some of those situations can also get into target shooting. There are a lot of folks out there that have been using 270 WSM and 7mm WSM as target cartridges, especially for really long range shooting and uh, to great effect. Now, there are gonna be some drawbacks, of course. This is a Magnum cartridge, even though it is a lot smaller than your 300 Win Mag. The recoil, and you know, the recoil is less. You're still gonna have a pretty good thump for your prone shooting and your bench shooting. So you probably wanna get yourself a good uh, muscle break for that, but the ballistics are going to be stellar. As you can see, they, with these bullets that are really designed for hunting, uh, these are matching 6.5 PRC with, you know, kind of a similar hunting bullet. And so you're going to be able to get really long distances. You're going to be able to stay supersonic for a very long time, and you're going to be able to fight the wind really well. And hopefully as we start seeing more of these 277 uh, cartridges, we're going to start seeing more 277 bullets. Uh, so hopefully we'll see more target, uh, designated bullets, ones that are extremely low drag and getting into some uh, maybe heavier weights. And we're going to see because we have, you know, 277 Fury is out there and we have, you know, a handful of others. So we're going to see where this heads in the future. On both the hunting and the target side of things, this has one great trick up its sleeve and that is its ease of hand loading. This has no belt. It's not, you know, some super fat case where you need weird sizing dies. Uh, it's not long, so you don't need a long uh, stroke on your press. Uh, it's all going to be very easy, same as hand loading 243 Winchester. And for that, you'll be able to cook up whatever kind of load you want. If you want reduced recoil, no problem. If you want to be able to stay supersonic as long as possible, you're going to be able to cook up those hand loads, and I think that this is going to perform extremely well for you. One of the things that I'm really happy about uh, is that Winchester took us out for a practical demonstration first. With a lot of these, it's all guesswork. You know, I'm out here at the bench taking a look at the cartridge and kind of hoping that when we get out into the real world, that yes, it will function uh, the way that it did. But it was nice to get out and our very first experience was harvesting deer, taking home meat, sticking it in the freezer. And that was just wonderful to me, just a whole lot of fun. And I think a lot of you guys, I'll be looking forward to hearing some of your experiences with this cartridge. Please let me know how this performs for you in the future. I think we're about to hear some really great things. Thank you to everybody that makes videos like these possible. Winchester, of course, and Indian Hill Outfitters that had us out there for the hunt. But thanks especially to patrons of the Destructive Arts. We have folks at the 338 Lapua Magnum level, like Sportsman's Guide, Stan and Mary and Tyler. And then at the 300 Win Mag level, we have Howard, we have Joseph Davis, we have Peter and Mr. No Name. And these are the guys, along with a whole lot of other folks that are chipping in a buck or two a month, uh, that are keeping the lights on, keeping me in uh, good audio gear and cameras and all that. 
that. So if anybody else wants to be one of those patrons of the destructive arts and earn a couple goodies, I'll put a link to Patreon around here. See you all around. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the destructive arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.